Um, we spend most of our time at our workplace and um, no matter what amazing company you are in, no matter how excellent you are at your work, but if you're not getting along well with your boss, it's getting, it's not getting anywhere. Okay. You will be at the losing end at some point, at somewhere, at any point of time at that, at that moment, because your boss is not helpful boss is not a com um, is not uh, accommodating you or boss is creating unnecessary problems for you at any point of time you might have felt that your boss is not acknowledging you or your boss is not listening you or your boss is kind of trying to hinder your progress this has actually happened to me in reality and i think professionally that was the worst the lowest moment of my life it was like I'm on a survival mood, you know, I'm going to work like I'm very, I'm very passionate about my work otherwise. But when I was under that particular boss, I was just emotionally exhausted. I had zero clue what to do because obviously such education, this doesn't come from college. And with experiences, we learn how to cope it. That was my first experience being under a bully boss. I would call that person a bully boss because that's what I feel. But yet again, these are all realities. These are all, you know, perceptions in our mind. So I would call that person a bully boss. And I was when I was working under that bully boss, it was emotionally exhausting. And I think, well, I had one more lowest point in my life, which I will not share right now. But being under a bully boss was one of the moments when, when I was really emotionally exhausted. You have to go to work. It was eight hours work every day. And honestly, just being stressful about what's coming next, my biggest worry was every day, okay, now what? Now what is the problem with me that this this boss is you know, you know bringing it forward? What is he or she is creating trouble? What trouble is she or he creating for me? It could be anything, you know, some some boss are there, they're, they're jealous, some are insecure, some are just bully, some are narcissist, some are just overall angry with their life, you know. So whatever, whatever the attitude of your boss is, it definitely gets emotionally overwhelming. And then mostly we are not trained or we when we realize that it's getting too much, it is too late. People enduring high stress, which is mostly due to work time, they often suffer from emotional exhaustion. If you have a boss which is making you um, not feel good about yourself, well, at the end of the day, it's not your boss's job to make you feel good. But you feel that, you know, th this personality is creating trouble for me. There are many things that you can do. You can do um number one thing that you can do okay what i'll do is we'll do it step by step you know because there are a few strategies which i would like to share with you but first of all i would like to tell you that you have to understand that idea of quitting might seem exhausting but being in the same place under the same boss every day is more exhausting so you have to make calculations and you have to see what is working best for you. You need to understand that you cannot change your boss personality. Please, if you are dreaming that one fine day my boss will realize that what whatever he's doing is not right, stop it. It's not helping. That is not going to happen because there is a very particular nature of psychopaths or people who, you know, hurt other people they don't realize the damage that they are creating. They have zero sense of that pain and they sleep very peacefully, actually. So this expectation that maybe, you know, you're so bad, how you can sleep well at night? Well, actually, they can. <laughs> actually, they very well can. So yes, maybe you are not the type of a person, but expecting same from other people, other person or your boss is not realistic as well. So please stop thinking that one fine day, your boss will change. Your boss will not change. If he has this personality or any attitude, any personality 
trait which is creating problem for employees it will stay there right now why they are doing what they're doing we possibly do not know they might be living some childhood trauma they might be from some i don't know dysfunctional family or they might be going through some tough friendships breakups relationships god knows what's going on in their life but the problem is that they have zero problem transferring that problems to other people and trust me that they sleep very well at night so if you are expecting that you know things will change over time no that is not going to happen not change by change i mean that your boss will change that is not happening so you can just drop this dream that you can change your boss and let's be realistic and go forward with your strategy how you want to move forward in that particular job right so let me check some questions now uh okay i think you can also see the questions um my immediate boss was unprofessional that's why i was fired by the company okay fear and anxiety toxic boss yes why most of the companies and managers don't look for satisfaction of their employees that's a very good question ready that's a very good question and i think we have to address that soon um insecure bosses now now harun this is our assumption okay that they are insecure i usually say maybe what they are doing whatever they are doing there because they are doing because their job is also in in danger you know they maybe they are doing it because they just want to make sure that things are done properly so here intentions do matter but yes as an individual our reality can be different than what is actually going on so yes you can judge you can have an opinion but don't let that opinion hinder your progress or come into you know into the middle of your passion uh okay Khawar is saying, I always believe that the head of department should be a leader, not a boss. The word boss itself sound a person who just don't care about others. Khawar, um, exactly. But realistically, there are many bosses who are actually boss and they are honestly pain. And most of the time, we cannot do anything about it. Okay. Umar Farooq is saying, "Sadaf, I think employees must ask for himself. Do we del- that? This is one of the points which I will be talking about today. Okay. So number one thing that we need to understand that we cannot change our boss attitude, our boss personality. Let's just for one minute try to look at the other side of the story." let's try to understand whatever your boss is doing what is the what is the what is his agenda okay i know i wouldn't go into details of why because we might not land land up anywhere because we cannot understand whatever he is doing why he is doing your boss but when i say let's try to f- go in depth a little bit to understand what is the agenda what is the reason what i mean is what is the position of that person in the company try to understand that when you are in a company everybody is responsible for themselves right so obviously your boss is also questionable to somebody your boss also has targets to meet your boss is not maybe you know just the only person in that company he might have some board of directors or he might have some problems with how his company image is going around you know in that particular industry so whatever he is doing give him a benefit of doubt or give him that leeway or give him this benefit that okay maybe he is doing because he has a bigger responsibility of that company and there is somebody on his head who maybe treats him the same way or his again yet again very conscious of the results that he or she is looking for for the company so because just because your boss has a lot of pressure they want to make sure that everything is going according 
to their, their will and their goal. Your boss can be micromanaging things. And if you don't identify or if you don't believe or if you don't see that thing as a problem, then it's not a problem. Whenever your boss comes to you with some micromanagement thing, you know, try to understand that your boss is doing it for the bigger purpose of the company. I think few things, employees are also very sensitive about few things. They kind of fall, uh, you know, they, they kind of fall from the sight of what the company's agenda is or what the goal is. So they might end up being emotionally, you know, uh, conscious that my boss don't trust me. No, it's not that he doesn't trust you. My, I mean, it's not always that he doesn't trust you. Maybe he has a particular way of doing things, which is obviously coming from his boss. So he wants to align that together. Okay. So whatever your boss is doing, doing, don't take things too personally. If he or she is a micromanager, understand that it's it goes in your favor. Only if you can give a little bit of attention, you can get the project project done in a way that your boss wants. And that will be error free because it is micromanaged. If you see, if you don't see it as my boss doesn't trust me, then that's not a problem. So being an employee, we are sometimes exhausted because we, you know, we just point our gun at somebody and we try to target them because they don't align with our way of working. So understand in any company, your way of working is not the only way of working. And it is, if you and your boss do, the, you have some friction, then it is definitely not, you guys are not on the same page of how to do, to do the task. Maybe both of your plans, both of your, both of the styles are perfectly okay, but they're not aligned. Okay. In that case, this is employee's responsibility to change his or her task to make it as valid that the boss can approve okay micromanagement don't take it personally if your your boss is going through tantrums maybe he is having a bad time at that moment you know yet again it's not about you eventually at the end of the day if you don't make things too chaotic they won't be all the bad moments at work which are personality related which are attitude related try to take them light if you don't take them light, you might end up in a loophole of emotionally exhausting individual. So here, let's define that whatever your boss is doing, it's not because you are the, you are the one who is in trouble. He or she is doing it because he has his own agenda and goal. The only problem is that you guys are not working in a same style. That's the only problem. Okay. Now, when you are when when you are working in a company or when you are even in a social setup at home relationship always two personalities will be different from each other you can say it uh, in your family even even staying together for so many years you might realize that no the person you know is not the same which is rightly so because people change and their personalities change so why this expectation from the boss that the boss will always be the person that you know that will do what how i want to get the things done that's not realistic so you have to understand at this point of time that the only problem here is a personality crash right the two personalities they they, they there is a clash between these two working style and it is as simple as that so if you want to minimize the impact you can by only changing your mindset. If your boss wants 10 reports, give it to him, right? What's the big deal about it? If your boss wants five reports, give it to him. What's the big deal about it? The big deal only comes ahead when you make it a big deal. That why 10 when I can do it in five? Well, I'm sorry, your boss doesn't think like that. And if he wants 10 reports, he wants 10 reports. It's as simple as that, yeah. If you don't like it, then the strategy that you want to do will be different. But you cannot question anybody's working styles because 
it's their personality and the expectation that they will change is yet again, like I said to you before, it's not realistic. So whatever they're asking for, if you want to keep that job, you have to do it, no matter you like it or no. Right? I know this seems a little bit harsh, but it is what it is, right? But yet, I'll take a, like um, um, a 10 second, I would say, to, to see comments, what's going on here. Because my laptop is like, you know, it's the, there is a continuous reel of comments, which I'm very curious to know. I would like to take a moment to see these questions. Two things we have talked about right now that number one, you cannot change your boss, understand this. And number two, whatever your boss is doing, it's not about you all the time. Okay, two things, hold on to these two things. And I will just have a look at these messages. Wow, I think, I mean, when I did this poll on my LinkedIn, I was not surprised to see the results. Majority of people have problems that their boss are really exhausting. And according to the research, three out of four people, they complain about their bosses, right? Now, these data is obviously coming from US because in South Asia, we don't have, like, I don't have this ease of uh, accessibility of researches, but in US and other part of the world, out of three people, out of four, sorry, three complain that they, they have bad boss. So this is quite worrisome, right? Okay. Boss are greedy and want to finish the work early. <laughs> Bless you, Fazli Wahid. He may be. Then we'll never know. We would never know. Um, yeah, Miraj. I mean, this makes sense because I've seen both sides as well, a good boss and a bad boss. And oh my gosh, how different those experiences were. But then these things tell you that how you shouldn't be, right? <laughs> yeah, many people, they have experienced such things. Oh, so hey, I'm so sorry. I know it's in English. I'll, I will try to put up a, an Urdu version of my YouTube video soon on YouTube, okay? Okay, Zoya. Hi, Zoya. So happy to see you. Okay, Zoya is saying open to ideas, being a boss is one thing, but employees have to understand that ultimately it's a business and the employers are very much responsible for meeting the targets. Flexibility is allowed, but I believe sometime we as an employee become too sensitive in terms of our right. I couldn't have put it so nicely. You know, Zoya, thank you so much for, you know, just putting it out there that Yes, this is how it is, that you need to understand that, that the company you are working for, they also have agendas and those agendas are bigger than the salaries and the people they have. It can be a harsh reality, but realizing the fact, you know, make things easy for everybody. And then, you know, we can, um, we can distract ourselves from focusing on why my boss is bad to what I can do about it. Okay, because these, these, are, these are two mindsets. If you, you will keep on thinking about why is he doing this? Why is it happening to me? Um, why companies do this? It won't land you anywhere productive where, you know, you can think that how I will find solution to my problems. So thank you so much, Zoya. I really appreciate. Oh, okay. Now quickly, all the messages went up. Um... If he has two departments, a question, what if he has of two departments have conflict, which affects employees, what to do in such situation as an employee? Fazal, I will be giving some five to seven pointers in the end where there are strategy, which will tell you what you can do about it. So this will be covered over there. In the end, I will going to tell the five, five ways of how you can handle this. So here, this is very enlightening. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, I'll take Nazma's comment. It's not about work, 10 to 20 report, the behavior of handling two different employees. One is very honest and hardworking 
and other less teamwork and responsible but boss like later one more nazma i will give the answer of this question very much now i am actually to, uh, looking at the looking at the time okay so i will going to answer this question right now um you said it's not about the reports 10 to 20 it's about the attitude different between the two employees everybody has different realities and everybody has different opinion about how they are treated okay some people are inclined to give favorism to other people that is also a reality now there are two employees and the boss is treating both of them differently based on one thinks that the other one doesn't deserve it and the second one thinks that the first one doesn't deserve it or you know some people might think that i need to be treated nicely because i deserve it when i was under my bully boss apparently okay um i was pretty much new and there was an employee who was working way before me and i cannot put that into words because i might say something harsh about that employee but i truly believe that my boss is nice to him because my boss is scared because the way that employee would just you know out loudly say things about the boss or he had some temper issues not the boss the employee my colleague okay my colleague has temper issues my colleague was rude my colleague would do finish work on time but, i mean i would also finish work on time but he was just loud and rude you know so i think he was actually harassing the boss and the boss would harass everybody else so it can be a cycle so why your boss is uh, giving favor or being nice to the other person i usually say asking why in such situation is not helpful okay the last strategies which i will give you might tell you that you know what pointers you can go with that works for you the thing is that why some people behave in a certain way we would never know and we cannot change them but like i told you my situation my colleague was rude that's why my boy, my boss was so scared of him and my boss when that that angry colleague when that rude colleague will come my boss will be like just you know um will be so docile and will be so quiet and will be so oh yes 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 it's okay don't worry we'll do like this whatever you say in abc and like other people will be like are you for real what we understood that because the that uh, colleague was very rude and the boss was just scared and was just saving the face value that's what has happened so nazma maybe just you know just be um, be a little bit uh, be be a bit mindful that what's happening around you what is going on with that employee if that serves your purpose right why your boss is doing that you would never know okay but if it's hurting you then it's legit okay don't hide away from the problem that it's okay it's fine if it's not fine it's not fine but ask yourself can you do something about this if yes what will that be right then you can go to something uh, some fruitful discussion that might help you right you what, what you can do is if usually i i recommend do not talk bad about your boss at your workplace because gossip travels really fast so never ever talk about your boss attitude or something you don't agree in 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 that office space because this will always come back to you having said that find some support network outside your work you want to talk about your boss you want to talk about how silly that boss is or you want to talk about how that boss creates problem for everybody talk about it but outside the office space this will be a smart thing to do because what happens when you talk about such things and maybe you never know i think in our case uh with my colleagues 
when I was working in this particular company, there was one colleague who was very kind, but was but but had a big mouth in terms of you know that she would say anything to anybody. So she saw she she happened to say a few bad things about the boss, and the boss ended up hearing it. So my colleague, my my other female colleague, kind of got in trouble for saying those words. So it's good to be mindful that when you are working in in an office space, do not talk about your boss problems to any of your colleagues because it is not helping you. It it might actually come in a negative way, and you never know. Maybe the colleague and uh, which you think is very irresponsible have some allies with the boss. Yet again, yet again, none of this is helping you in your office, right? So acknowledge the fact that you don't like it, and also acknowledge the fact that you are bigger than this, and this problem doesn't define you. I hope it helps, Nazma. Okay. I think every okay. I think big issues. Okay, is boss always right? Matiullah, what an amazing question. Is boss always right? Also, is client always right? According to the company, boss, what's your thought? Okay, if you ask me my opinion, when I was in a bad space with my boss, I just went bonkers and I went against whatever was happening to me. I didn't put my foot down, and obviously because I had Plan B in my mind, and they, 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 and I think the financial need was not as such that much at that time. I would say, so I was very calculated with my moves, but I know that I really, really went for not to accept for whatever was happening around me. I. I also got in trouble because of this, but it's a bit complicated. You know, whenever I go through that part of the time, it's a bit complicated, but it surely taught me a lot. If you ask me, is boss always right? Sadly, yes. Why? Because he is your boss. He or she is your boss. Okay, they have this label. Which I think sometimes some people abuse, some pipe, some people use, but are they right? Yes, they are right. Having said that, having said that, you need to understand when I say boss is right, it means how the operations are done, because your boss will always have a boss, right? And that boss will listen to your immediate boss, and it will come back to you. It's very rare. It's very rare <clears throat> that. You have very good terms with the boss's boss, and then you have you can do things differently. When it comes to operations, when it comes to how things are done, your boss is right. But if it's something ethical, if if it's something that hinders your your values, if it it is something that you know unethical going in the company, then <clears throat> no, your boss is not right. So it truly depends on the situation. Whatever you are talking about, is your boss always right? Depends the context, right? So if the context is that how things will be done, only boss can decide that. The procedure, SOPs, operations, he or she, your boss will decide that how they would like people to contact their customers when problems comes, how it should be handled. So yes, you have to follow that if they want. These many emails, calls in a day. It is what it is. So if you ask me operation wise, yes, they're always right. Whatever directions you get from the top, if you want to play safe, just follow them, right? If you don't want to follow them, then at least have a better plan B. Because sometimes not everybody has this this facility or this option of leaving a job, and you know. Start fresh or start new or take a break. Not everybody have this luxury, so you have to be very calculated with your with the choices that you might be making. But just to have a peace of mind, operation, it's a good idea to let your boss be right and follow the instructions that are coming to you. 
Okay. Now, in such situations, sometimes when people are very creative, they find it um, kind of a problematic that they have a better way, but that better way is not acknowledged. And yet, because of the boss, because maybe the boss is jealous or the boss thinks that maybe, you know, the idea which you, you are putting forward, yes, it's very good, it's very creative, but he's not part of that idea. So that in insecurity might come up. So if that's the case, again, you have to understand that when there's a time for evaluation, when there, there is a time for pay raise, promotion, everything, your boss words, they do count. So maybe you can take your boss into confidence and have a conversation with him. Make a request. Don't give feedback. Okay. So depending upon how you put up your request to your boss, about the idea you have, things might change. We never know. Okay, Mathiola, I hope it helps. Thank you for the question. What's Thank you, Nazma. Thank you so much. You are bigger than this, you know. You are bigger than your job. And if you don't like your job, start planning your exit, exit strategy. Because trust me, not everybody is meant to do job. And not everybody is meant to do business, vice versa. <laughs> to whom we trust more, boss or colleagues? Uh, Umar Farooq, nobody. Honestly, your boss, um, your office space is not to make friendship or to trust people. There, the agenda is different. There, the agenda is to get the task done, to let the goals meet and, you know, bring business. That's it. And why do you want to trust anybody for anything at work? I mean, I always have these two things differently. My colleagues would never be my friend, 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 you know, where you feel emotionally comfortable, share secrets. No, no, a big no. Keep these two differently professionally, right? Handle them in a different way. I would never recommend to, to trust any of your colleague or your boss with the vulnerable information that you have about yourself especially. Mm -hmm. That is the space to perform. I know it sounds a bit harsh, but it's a reality. If you want to trust somebody, you need to have a very good gut and intuition before you can trust anybody. If you are confident about that for yourself, then yes, you can trust. Okay. Otherwise, I think it gets really, really tough to trust somebody <clears throat> if you are not good with your intuitions and your gut. So here, we will just take a 30 seconds break and I'll be right back. You stay there. See you. are back we are back okay Muhammad Farooq is saying <clears throat> without trust don't you think workplace will become hell um, if you believe it will become hell then it will become hell but if you believe that you are um, you want to protect yourself and you're not sure about it then it's not Right. So you can never, never trust anybody if you're not sure that you want to trust. So at of at workplace, you have to be. Yes, you can be very nice and bubbly. But when we, we, we say trust, this is something very special, because if you trust somebody and then you go overboard with them, the things can come back again to you in a negative way and then you might not like it. So be very, very smart if you want to trust somebody at workplace, right? Be if you're highly intuitive and you know your sixth sense and intuition and gut, they're all aligned, then go for it. Otherwise, just be careful because not everything comes into, you know, as a good result. Okay. Anyway, so we are going ahead now. Uh, what else? Okay. Now, I will quickly going to tell you a Gallup study where they say that 
you need to have consistent and meaningful communication, performance management beyond annual reviews and focus on strength, not on weaknesses. When I was going through this Gallup report, that says that consistent and meaningful communication, performance management beyond annual, re annual reviews. I was talking to myself and I was asking that if you ask as a boss, if you ask your employee some extra question, your employee might see it as um, as that you don't trust them or the, the employees might see that why are you asking so many questions and why do you want these reports at that time? So as an employer, as a boss, if you are doing such things, please make sure that your employees, they trust you. Please make sure that the goals are already identified and communicate with them before strategize, strategizing anything because sometimes even good boss are taken wrongly just because the way they do a task. So at the end of the day, yet again, as an employee, this employee and employer relationship is very tricky. I find both of them right. <laughs> Honestly, I find both of them right. But sometimes the, the style of work doesn't match. And that's where the friction comes in. So as a boss, if you have some strategy, some plan, what happens usually, what companies do as a leader, we choose somebody who is very charismatic, has a great personality, and you know, they look amazing because this is what mostly people look for. They 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 just get overwhelmed with personality that are loud, that are beautiful, that they talk amazing, and they, they influence other people, even if they're not competent enough. So if something is going on in your company, just be mindful to identify such things okay so having said that you need to understand that companies sometimes might hire only charismatic personalities as a leader because they can influence they might not be competent and if that's the case just identify it and do your best at your work don't let your passion die because of your boss because i've seen this happening many times that people they just lose their spark because their boss is not you know um, is not working the way they want. Like, just listen to, to the face. But the boss doesn't do the things that I want. This statement itself is kind of, is very demanding that why should boss always work as employees want and vice versa, why employees should work as well. We know why employees, because they want a job, but the boss, he is always in a, bet is always in a better space, is, always, is already in a better position as compared to anybody else. So yes, if they are exploiting, you have other ways to go about it, right? -o? Okay, so the best thing that you can do is stay on purpose. You have to stay on purpose. So that is the reason where you will be distracted from your boss. There are a few things which I would quickly like to share with you. I've taken a few notes because I didn't want to miss any part. I hope I haven't missed any comment. Okay, so last 10 minutes, I'm winding this up and then I will going to give you few <clears throat> few pointers that can help you. Okay, now, number one, if you are working in an environment with the boss, which is toxic, which is not favorable, which is which is hurting you, understand that you cannot change your boss. Okay, what you have to do instead now you, it is important for you to understand your boss, <clears throat> whatever he wants. You, if you are more aware, excuse me, if you are more aware of what your boss wants, you can provide it timely and in a healthy and a positive manner. So focus on your job. Be more aware of your boss' demands and need and his personality. Try just try to understand and focus. Whenever he's telling you something, take notes, take hints, and try to do things according to his plan. Do first if you start if you start doing things the way he wants, then maybe in the long run you can add your creativity. But initially to build a relationship, understand how your boss works, what they want, how they want things to be done. Try to be as close to that strategy as you can, and then later on you can add your creativity because now you have built a rapport with your boss. Okay. And please don't try to fix your boss because it is not helping you or anybody else. Um, try to look things from their point of view as well. Like I told you that they have a responsibility which they have to, obviously they, they are answerable to, and to, 
to many other people as well, board of directors, stakeholders, investors, media, and so on and so forth. If you are having trouble with your boss, try to approach things differently, okay? Having said that, having said that, if you want to see things differently, you need to have a new strategy for that. For that, you have to erase all your perceptions, your old perception, and you have to start fresh where you want to see things to be going. And um, in few cases, this is actually what I did. Document everything. It is a very good idea. You have to make sure that whatever email is going on, whatever uh, communication is going on, try to document it as much as possible. Try to keep things in an email, okay? Don't depend on the verbal communication all the time because that will help you. So, and what else? Uh, yeah, two more things, two more things, which will help you is if you're very unhappy in particular job and uh, you feel that things are not, okay, why Umar Farooq? No, I just missed it, okay. So if you still feel that things are very miserable and you know, your boss is just, it's not going anywhere you do you you're not enjoying and it's not meant for you work on your exit strategy there will be some protocol in your company you want to add new skill you want to do some part-time you want to do something on media on social media for your work for for i mean as a personal branding you can start doing that having more income resources at one household is always a good idea so you can see what works best for you. But I think if you are really very miserable and it's exhausting, understand that maybe it's time to have an exit strategy. Because mostly people are miserable, but they don't leave a job because uh, maybe sometimes it's paying their bills, obviously. Sometimes their colleagues are amazing. The work experience that they are getting, they want that particular work experience, their colleagues are good. Maybe it's near to their place or maybe they can foresee some other career growth in that company. So these can be one of the few of the reasons that even though boss is not good, but people somehow they still don't leave a company. So you find your why that what is working for you and how you would like to change that. Having said that, last thing which is very important is that um, please check your overall health. Are you drinking enough water in office? Are you taking care of your vegetables? Are you eating greens? Uh, are you sleeping well? And um, what sort of energies do you have around you? Um, what's going on in, in your life otherwise? You know, just keep a check on your health. Sometimes we are just irritated on something else and it goes to something else, you know. So just make sure that you're drinking enough water, you're taking off your greens because what is going inside in terms of food, thoughts, our beliefs, our energies, spirituality, they kind of define our outside reality as well. So if you're not drinking enough, enough water, there is a chance that if your boss didn't agree with you, you wouldn't like it like maybe 90% times. But if you are uh, if you are in a better health physically, you're drinking enough water, you are eating vegetable, you're not eating outside junk all the time, you will feel a lot better even if something is not going in your favor, if something even not going according to your plan or according to your thought. So this inside check is very important right? I hope it helps. And yeah, that's it. Just stay on your purpose. Just understand your job, your pa your passion, your career is bigger than whatever is happening around you. If you don't like it, the only thing you can change is yourself. So the expectation that someone else will change is not realistic. Okay. I, I, I am done after this 45 minute session now, and I will just going to have a look at comments that what's going on here okay muhammad umar is saying very good content good good topic but above all 
Um, good topic, but above all, what I noticed, you manage it without notes, which much natural and show how well you did your home already. Thank you so much, Umar. I appreciate. I mean, you guys have actually seen how this, the progress of how all of this, you know, this setup started from one so far. And we have progressed today with the mic and and some artwork at the back. So the space is getting better for sure. Okay. Banish is saying, thank you, great session. Boss is exhausting everywhere. There is no guarantee for her. Thank you so much. Danish, you have, you know, concluded the session in a perfect way. Just be positive, be energetic, be happy. And trust me, happiness is an inside job. We, we tend to look at here and there. It's inside, okay? And your boss doesn't define your worth, okay? Your boss doesn't define your worth. Every day, do your best. Every day, do amazing, you know, do your do. Like this prop, say, let me... Let me show you this thing. I hope you can see it. Have you promoted yourself today? Okay. So treat yourself every time. And um, yeah, promote yourself on your own. <laughs> um, okay, Habib. And now I'm just taking questions, okay? If you don't like any job or boss quit, that's obviously find another opportunity. I agree. I agree. Thank you, Habib. 